any of the new letters are not here. But they're coming very shortly. Um, you're not supposed to be in here yet. Oops, sorry. The guests are fighting over the letters already. Are you coming to sit in? Harry, are you coming to sit yeah, in? I'm coming to sit in. Alex? Alex and Alex. Harry are on the show. The letters tonight are these. I was so shocked and incensed when I was approached by a middle-aged woman begging at the local movie house. Mm. Yeah, no compassion there. What happened to the notion of the liberated female? You'll be good on this one, mm. won't you? Uh, probably. Because none of the women that I've ever met have managed to liberate themselves from the need to land and marry a man. You have. No, I've got a girl that, a girlfriend that... A going girlfriend that, that... That's going through that, that right now. That you have to be quick in this segment. Yep. I'm Come glad on. we told you that. And the last one, the average girl now really needs to, to improve her IQ before improving her boobs. Wow. Well, we won't say anything until the segment starts. All these letters and more and a full panel coming up in about 20 seconds. Don't go away. Alex, what are you doing? There? I'm just oh, getting in my else. seat. Got a problem, big or small, would a miracle be nice? Our monthly crew is back, churning out advice. You might even laugh a bit in the following half hour. Park your backside on the couch, cause baby it's time for Sweet and Sour. Right here on Sweet and Sour. Good evening everyone, welcome to Sweet and Sour. Where was that clapping again? <laughs> Thank you, Harry. <laughs> nice to have you here, mate. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Sweet and Sour. Gary Mitchell with you for the next half hour. Terrific lineup of guests. First up, his honour the mayor. Hello, sir. Hi, Gary. Been under the weather. I have, I oh. have. Exclusively come out just for Sweet and Sour. I've gone from here he is again to where is he? Big call. Thank you, sir. Yes, no problem. All right. Well, if you need a couple of Panadols during the show, just put your hand <laughs> As long as I don't during collapse, we'll be all right. All right, mate. Thank you. Big effort. No, good to have you here. Always good to have you, sir. For the first time, I'm on the show tonight. Hello, Ooh. Carmen. Hi, how are you going? Welcome. You're Thank a, you. You're a kitchen designer. Yes. How long have you been a kitchen designer? I've been a kitchen designer for about 15 years. You don't look old enough. Are you serious? Yes. What, did you start when you were seven? Oh, about six. That's six. Yeah, so yeah. All right, all right. Like just, just after nappies. Well, you should see my kitchen. <laughs> yes. And design there. I'm, <laughs> I'm pleased. We'll do that later. Welcome to the show. Thank Good to you. Have you. Hello, Alex. Hello, Gary. Have you seen my kitchen? No. No, you haven't seen my kitchen. Are you going to cook me dinner? Mm, what do you like? Uh, some pasta. That stuff that starts with B. Ba, 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 you know, the dessert. Baklava. Baklava. <laughs> oh, moussaka. Uh, no, 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 no. Moussaka. No. I have, I have made um, baklava. I yeah. had made moussaka, that, but not for oh, 20 oh, years, oh. at least. That's Harry, are you ever any good at cooking things? No, I'm great. I do a good balaclava. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. All right, I've got two Al, Al we're, we're going to Harry's place instead. Oh, <laughs> what? You got two spitters? You just sat. Said that you were him. Can't, can't win. Can't win. But it doesn't stop you coming on the show, does it? Nope. No. There we go. Little one. Beggar's belief. And Kevin from McGill in South Australia writes: Hi, sweet and sour. Why do people need to beg in this country? Please tell me. I'm a pensioner with very little in the bank. I receive rent assistance and I live by myself and I feel the pressure of rent hikes. I receive pharmaceutical benefits and like everyone my age, and I'm in my early 70s, I have my ailments and use Medicare, but I also can't afford private health cover. Unlike many Australians, I have lived in other countries as a permanent resident, South Africa, Scotland, New Zealand, and now Australia, having been a naturalised Aussie for over 20 years. Having lived elsewhere and finally settling here, I can say with some conviction we live in the best country in the world. I can even afford to travel a little with the help of a part-time job that I've taken up two days a week, six hours a day. So I was shocked and incensed when I was approached by a white Anglo-Saxon middle-aged woman begging at the local movie theatre. There is no need for anyone in this country to beg. We have the best safety net system in the world, so why does it happen? I can't understand it at all. As we said, Kevin of McGill, South Australia. Harry, is there a need for some people to beg in this country? Well, Kevin, I think what it is is that as our population in, it keeps continuing to grow, it's just merely a numbers game. If you only have 1% that are doing this and you've got a small population, you don't tend to notice them. But as the population gets bigger and there's still 1% doing it, you're just going to notice it. I don't think people want to beg. I think what yeah. it is is that that's the, that's the only way they see themselves getting through. They've obviously been to the various departments, made <laughs> inquiries or whatever the case is. But don't be incensed by it. I mean, be more sympathetic to it. Is just see what you can do to help them. 
Have you noticed an increase over the last six months as opposed to previous years? I think there, I think there has been a slight increase and I think that's why there's a lot more consciousness about people helping them as well. There's a lot more appeals out there. There's the, there's the CEO sleep out things and all the other things that have happened. And, and definitely I think we are working towards solving the problem. It's like wherever you go, I've been all across the world. I've been in America and I just couldn't believe how many people I saw there. You see it there. everywhere. And yeah. you see it everywhere. Right. But I think if we keep it, in our, keep it in our consciousness, we'll do something to fix it. Alex, what do you do when you see someone begging for money? Um, I don't give them any money. Why not? Because, um, look, there's, t there's two, two things. There's, I work for a, a government department that dealt with homeless people. And a lot of that is, um, there's a lot of mental health issues as well to, in regards to people that beg on the street, you know, um, you can't help them because they've got mental health issues, you know. And um, the other thing that I, was, I got incensed about was, was um, I went to um, my local IGA and there was a guy sitting out there begging and he had Nikes on. And I went into the woman and I said, well, that guy's sitting out there begging. She goes, oh, he's only there for two hours, but he's got Nikes on. Not everyone can afford Nikes. Oh, he might have been really the, the No, pair. look, he was... You know, you don't know, what makes me angry, these people are begging in the street and they're sitting there with a packet of cigarettes. It's $20 for a packet of cigarettes. Oh. Oh. You don't know the man's story. He might know, have even been given just... the cigarettes. No, but and it's he, hard to quit. He did I hate smoking, but... It, it... He didn't look like a beggar. You know, there's, there's got to be the genuine ones, but then there's also the well, ones that you, rot it. Well, how do you know which ones? You don't. Them? You don't. Why would you want to actually debase yourself and beg on the street? I would, if, I unless you had to. No, of course. But or then, you didn't like have said, any alternative. There's some that there's the mental health issue people well, that are the there, one. and they sit on the street and people give them money. I see them in the city. There's a lot of those in the city, but I never see women begging. I've never really seen a woman beg. And that was another oh, issue. Men yeah. are the ones that are normally you see begging in, in fact, the street. In fact, I just generally see I've women. Never, I've never seen a woman. You've I seen do. women? Yeah. Where do you hang out, Gary? <laughs> Carmen, <laughs> what do you do when somebody comes up to you and says, Oi, can depends I have a dollar, please? It depends if I have change or not. So if I have change, it's I believe in paying it forward. So basically, oh, yeah. yeah. Like so if it's sort of like um, the Robin Hood. If I've got something, to give it to the poor. But if I don't have... Um, anything just don't make eye contact oh, sort okay. of like the raffle sellers in the you know the, the malls and stuff like that yeah. if you don't want to make and they yell hey you hey you no just don't make eye contact the worst of it is that not a lot of people are actually carrying change nowadays it's right. getting That's less the and less because yeah. all the, all the yeah. cards i feel sorry for so what do you say to um kevin um is there a need just ignore it. If it's an issue with you, with personally, this? just keep walking. Don't let it offend you. Yeah. Don't let I it mean, there's a lot of other issues in the world today that we should be more concerned about than people begging on the street. Well, got to look worse. after them. Yes. Jono. Oh, yes, from yes uh, Kevin, you're, you're an ignorant idiot. Um, <laughs> this, you know, honestly, people are doing it really tough out there. Oh, it is a really oh, hard true. time. And, and to be so petty as to say you, you are just outragedly offended by somebody uh, obviously needing, having the need to beg. Uh, I've, uh, I've known a people that have come and seen me that's had their rents put up uh, astronomically and, and with that it leaves them out of their pension $6 to live on a week. It is just very, very tough out there and it's getting tougher obviously as the employment climate uh, deteriorates and I just noticed obviously you've lived elsewhere around the country and absolutely we live in the best country in the world because it's not too many other countries in the world where you can be a natural citizen of somewhere else and still get a pension from this from another country where you're living in so I think you're, you're a bit ignorant Kevin and uh, just think about uh, how, how worse off everybody else has it and uh, perhaps you would uh, you'll think again before writing rubbish like this. There you have it. Good on the mayor. When we come back, we're talking about whether women just want to get married. Really? We'll see what the panel's got to say. Don't go away. More of Sweet Set. <laughs> see you soon. Alex. Are you doing? Said just yeah, as we were going. Uh, <laughs> welcome back to Sweet and Sour. If you'd like to send us a letter, send it to the address that's appearing on your screen right now. There it is, letters at sweetandsour.net.au. You can also have a look at us on our website, which is sweetandsour.net.au. <laughs> and you can give us a like on Facebook and send us a little me message on... What's that one? Twitter. Twitter. There we go. Tweet, tweet, tweet. And for everyone who does send us a letter, we're going to send you to the movies courtesy of Natalie Cameron and NRC Communications and the mu movie we're sending you to this week is Magic in the Magic, Magic in, in the, the 
Moonlight. 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 Need to get you some glasses. Moonlight. I know. I have to get some. Oh Moonlight. goodness me! Yeah. Dear yeah. Mitch and panelists, why do women just want to get married? Ooh. After one month, all they push uh, for is to hear those three little words, "I love you," for some pathetic sense of reassurance. <laughs> after three months, they talk about their friends who are getting married and after another three months they start creating arguments because we haven't started talking marriage yet. I don't understand the universal paranoia. The worst of it is that it intensifies when a woman starts feeling the biological clock ticking. Well, that's what I think. Every time I've dated a woman in her mid to late 30s, I'm 36, I always get the, you're not going to waste my time, are you, speech. <laughs> Am I right in assuming this is a universal female affliction are there any women who don't want to focus on uh, marriage? What happened to the notion of the liberated female? Because none of the women I've ever met have managed to liberate themselves from the need to land and marry a man. Alistair of Brighton in Victoria. Jono, this man's a, a nutter. Yeah, I've, well, I think I've so. only met I, I, one woman who ever fitted yes, that category. I think, uh, Alistair, yeah, you're a bit of a chauvinistic. Uh, uh, well, yeah. what, what sorts of women is he attractive? Well, That's all he's I, getting. I, I, personally it's think it's in, I, I personally think it's in his head that he thinks every woman is instantly attracted to him and wants to get married to him and uh, can't live without him. Well, I had to tell you, he's a dick. Uh, Alistair, <laughs> but, uh, but women do it just fine uh, on their own and uh, I'm sure there's plenty of women out there that are running this country and doing a fine job at it uh, and certainly don't need you, Alistair, and chauvinistics like yourself. Do you think Alistair is a dick? Carmen. Of course I think he's a dick. Okay. I actually fit, fit this demographic. I'm, I'm 34 years old, so I'm mid to late 30s. I fit, you want to get married? No, I would like to get married to the right person. Good. But okay. basically, I'm not in a rush. I would rather wait, and that's why me, now at my age, I'm not married. Because you haven't rushed, and you haven't and put the hard word on any bloke that's no. come past. Oh, my goodness me. Okay, if you were 45 and you hadn't married, would it worry you? If... I'd rather be um, a single female and independent than actually be with someone and living a life. Good for you. What about you Alex? Alex? What about you Alex? Alex is preening herself. <laughs> uh, we, we can put your contact details up after the show if you want. What? <laughs> <laughs> Alistair would like a response. <laughs> Listen, Alistair, I can understand exactly what you're saying, especially when you meet women in their 30s, their biological clock is going tick, 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 tick. That happened, I knew, I went out with a guy who was um, five years younger than me. He dumped me because I, when ANSET collapsed, he couldn't come over to Perth anyway. That's a long story. Anyway, I won't get into that one. But then Sounds he more interesting dating than this one. a woman who was 10 years younger than me, and she was in her 30s, and so um, I said to him, be careful because her biological clock will be ticking. And he goes, no, it won't, no, it won't. What happens? She gets pregnant to him. Women at that age all want to have a baby, and it's a very, very loud tick. The women you're meeting, obviously, doesn't not every woman's like that, but I can understand your fear. I, it's true. There's a lot of women out there. I worked. I, have, I worked with a okay. lot of women that went on about. I've got to have hang a baby. I've got on, to have on. a baby. I've got to have. That's I had a girlfriend. Yeah, but hang telling you. Hang on, hang on, I had a girlfriend hang on, hang that went around America and she got pregnant to a guy because she wanted a baby and she's got a baby now. But she didn't want to marry him. There's a different she thing. She wants here. to marry him. No one want to marry her, but she just wanted the baby and she got a she baby. She just wanted a baby. She just wanted a Did baby. Did she marry the bloke? No, because he. Right. Well, I won't say anything because she might be. She wanted a baby. But. Yeah, but... Well, I think it's natural for women to want a yeah, baby, for men to want to be fathers. No, but the, they're women, sort of they do. They still believe in the, you know, the fairy tale, the ring, the, the wedding, the white dress, the flowers. I've only the ever had one woman that I've known that I've gone out with who's actually well, wanted to you. focus on getting married. That's your. But women don't shove it in your face. Well, you haven't been out with lots of women, Gary. you? I know <laughs> lots of women. No, I don't go out with women. Look, there's nothing wrong with urges that you have, but they don't shove it in people's faces. Um, believe it or not, there Most are people women do out have there that want to get... I've met women that say, if I don't, if I go at this guy and he doesn't propose to me, or it's not going to go down that track, then he's wasting my time, I'm going to move on. OK? It does happen. So you can't say this guy's you're, an idiot you're, you're and an he's this and You he's and that Alistair are moving in the same circles. Got, I can understand Harry? it. <laughs> Alistair, you need to change your bandwidth, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you need to go away from the 30-year-olds and maybe start going out with 40 or 50-year-olds. And that'll solve your problem. Yeah, that Nothing won't to talk about. <laughs> Nothing to talk about. Because uh, also, I think that 
that you might be the type of guy that's attracting Klingons as well. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, I think it's what he's yeah. putting out there. He's a really good looking well, guy. Is that matter. a problem? Yeah, no, that's not a problem. It's no, not, but it's not. Well, no, no, have but the a lot of women. But Alex, like you can tell by his languaging, it's not a, it's not a universal affliction. I mean, is he going on have like dating it, websites and getting be. these people? That's it. Well, maybe that's the know. issue. Maybe it's the thing, the bait that he's putting out there is actually suggesting that it's women who are. Oh, you're so, you're so condemning you people. We're so condemning. You should. This one says we're so condemning. We're going to continue the conversation with the next letter asking, are women all fakes? You said you're going to marry me, Gary. Oh. I must have been drunk. When we come back, sweet and sour, don't go away. What about kids? Sweet or sour, one thing's for sure, all smells the same in the dark. They did. Welcome back to Sweet and Sour. Here we go. Hello, panel. I wanted to add my bit, for all it's worth, to this fascination with fakery fad that society has had for a few years now. I'm talking breast implants, tats, eyelashes, false hair, and the list goes on. Not only does the average boy not really know what he's getting now, but we've become such an indulgent and superficial society that the average girl really needs to improve her IQ now before improving her boobs. I want to kiss the girl, not the plastic bits. I want to talk to the human being, not the facade hiding the real deal. If I wanted plastic, I would have bought a blow-up doll. Relationships aren't lasting simply because today's girls aren't real. Every girl has to be herself. She has to be natural. All women need to know that if they want a lasting relationship, they need to stay real and lovable. Billy Idol once sang Flesh for Fantasy, and that is unfortunately what we've created. Where do I find the last of the real girls? Laz of Lakembla in New South Wales. Alex, this guy's a dick. Absolute dick. <laughs> I'm a real girl. Yeah. I'm all yeah. real. Nothing, everything matters. Well, he can't, he can't get past the I don't superficial look like this. bits. Quite most of the girls today. Uh. You know, they get their lips... I, I know exactly what you're saying. I think you oh. really hit the nail on the head, head very Laz, because today... He's not getting past it. No, no, but there's a lot of women out there that's got their fake hair, the fake lips, the fake everything. Nothing moves, the fake nails, the fake boobs. Everything's fake. There's not real. I mean, and then they, they go home, they take everything off, and the guy's going, where's that girl? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It, but it's not true. And but even it, if it you've is. got one or two today, of these things. Today's society is so hung up. Cats, I don't give a damn. No, I hate to Eyelashes, I don't give a damn. No. Yeah, but they look good. You. But that's you, Gary. You know, you just have. You, that's oh. right. And it's not him. He's focusing on superficial crap. Well, he's probably been going out with women and they're like that and he's probably had enough of it. I wonder. He mentions nothing about their conversation. Well, he's probably met them so much and they're all like, do you like my hair? Uh, my hair? Sounds like because he's had a bad, bad experience and he's focusing on all these sorts of things. And yes, not Doctor. To go, you know, well, you, well, yeah, you're Mr. You, psychiatrist. Why would you worry about whether a girl has a well, tat? Because he's writing a letter in about what he's seeing out there. So why would you worry about, about it? it? Because he's concerned about it, that there's women out there that all the women he's meeting are all fake. And I they're agree. They're not fake. 100%. Just, you're it, right. Most of them are. He hasn't got there yet. They're not all fake. Well, most of you've been hair, out at night. Wrong. You don't go out at night. You don't see them. Take a walk through the street. Come to see me. Let's go for haunt. a walk. Let's go for a walk. What one places day. do Let's you go. want? Harry? Oh, Alex. I Women can't... are real. Tell this Alex, bloke. I can't agree with you. Look, what happens, unfortunately, I've got to tell you the man side of the story. Oh, we develop yeah, an addiction. We develop an addiction to plastic through Legos. <laughs> and after, after our addiction with Legos, we like everything that, that, that is plastic and we love oh. blow up stuff and all the rest of it. What I'm always worried about people buying those blow-up dolls is I wonder what their parents are like. <laughs> but anyway, not to worry. Les, Les, <laughs> where's, <laughs> where's the error here? Is it the bloke or is it the girls he's going out with? Uh, I don't see this as a universal tell. issue. Les, it's... Well, you you uh, know, a, a, a girl who has a tat doesn't necessarily have breast implants or wears no, false eyelashes or false hair. You know? Absolutely he's generalising. You know, That's why he's well, a mug. It's true. A lot of the women that you see, no. they're all fake. Like no, I they're not all the fake. Well, fake. the only, the only thing is... Fake. Are you fake? No, I'm not fake. But well, I'm, so I'm the rest school. of the girls on this planet are I'm fake, aren't they? I'm school, but today there's a lot of women out there and it's all about hair... Hair uh. extensions used to be private. Nobody was supposed to know you had hair extensions. Oh. And it was like, oh, my God. Now everyone's going, oh, my hair extensions. I don't have a problem with any of those. 
those things. If you want to focus on them, you're going to have a problem with them. Jono. Uh, yes, uh, look, Alex, I think you should actually support the sisterhood because I'm more of a sister right at this moment than, uh, than what you're being to your fellow fe uh, fellow feminists out are. there. Absolutely. Uh, look, uh, Laz, with an attitude like that, I can assure you, you're probably only getting plastic because the only thing you're getting is you blow up dolls. So uh, <laughs> until you change your attitude and realise that every woman is real, regardless of what uh, cosmetic surgery she may or may not have had, uh, every woman is still real. So, uh, Laz, I mean, we've just got a bunch of nutters writing in tonight it's just He's ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> this, this I agree. Him. but hang on no, you have an environment where these things are on offer and you have peer pressure so some of the girls yeah. just go okay I'll consider that as well doesn't mean to say they're fake I this agree. is this well, is the they, age that they live in they now. are not fake what they're doing to themselves is fake fake hair fake nails fake lips guess fake what, like guess what? I've got exactly. makeup on tonight for TV yeah, but that's makeup nah yeah so yeah, is all this whatever. it's the superficial <laughs> stuff last word to a female I, Sorry, I personally <laughs> think everything's available technology's advanced over a period of time so you know GHDs straining the hair, Botox and um, collagen. GH what? Yeah, but that's good not hair fake. Day. That's a hair good. straighter. It's not fake. Oh, you're not putting it's hair straight. You're but not even putting poison they, inside your face. But and technology's got better over the time. And if a lady wants to feel good and makes her feel confident of and course. go out like that, I've got no qualms. Yeah, but but this beyond. particular guy, if he doesn't like it, don't go out where these people are. Don't you hang out with that. these people like that. There are women out like yourself that's actually quite, um, you know, not, not fake at all. So go and find you. Where do you hang out? Oh, I'm concerned about the plastic surgeons. How are they going to have the cars? <laughs> how, are look, how are they going to have the houses? <gasps> do you like yes. this letter to give away the pair of limited edition sunnies courtesy of Elon Trees and Aussie yep. Opticals, or do you like another one? Yep. I think this one, yes. Oh, you like this one? Les, Les. Laz. You support Laz as well. I'm on your side, Laz. Uh, Jono? I'm Oh, look, I'm definitely not on Laz's side. I think he's I'm the worst of the bunch. I don't think any of them deserve uh, anything <laughs> tonight, but uh, if you were to give it to somebody, I suppose it'll be Alistair Letter 2. Alistair Letter 2. We've got two for Letter 3, one for Letter 2. Harry? Well, mate, I'm going to have to go with Laz. Uh, I love Legos. OK. <laughs> Coming out to Laz, who thinks everything's fake, a pair of limited edition Cause sunnies. Because you're so cool and you can sit back and hide behind them and yep. put on any masquerade that you want to. That's it. We've got to disappear. <laughs> You're glad to get out of here tonight. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> Thank you, Al. Nice to have you here. I hope you're feeling better next time uh, you're oh, on the show. You'll, you'll, well you'll probably be sitting in this seat before you, uh, <laughs> I see you on the panel again, John. Well, who, who knows? But um, yes, look, I hope we'll be back up and running in full, full steam in a couple of weeks. All right, mate. Good on you. Thanks for coming in. No problem. Carmen, yeah. first, first night on the panel? Yes, it is. Enjoy it? Yes, it was brilliant. Come back? Yes, I'd love to. We'll have you back. You have to design my kitchen, please. Yes, anything. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Harry, good night, mate. <laughs> What am I, chopped liver? No, no, yeah. we'll come back to you. No, we'll okay. come back to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Good to see you again, Gary. Same thing. Welcome aboard, Carmel. Thank you. Alex? Hello. We'll see you again soon, yeah. won't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where are we going for dinner? You're going to make me moussaka. <laughs> Dream on. Actually, I should. You'll yeah. never want it again. We've got to go. Thank all of our wonderful panelists. Thank our terrific crew, and thanks for having Good us night. on tonight, Australia. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Bye-bye. Yeah. Moussaka. Moussaka.